Hey guys, welcome into Fantasy Football Academy 2020. As always, I am the host, the Dean. And look, we've got two more games coming up tonight. Uh, it's Monday, early Monday morning. I uh, like try to get this content out. And I just want to let you guys know, I've had people ask me, hey, do you just like take from other shows and you kind of take their rankings and you put them in yours and just kind of put your own spin on it? Look, I try to put out my content before I watch any other program. So I watch the, the fantasy footballers. I follow uh, the fantasy pros and I love their content. I love their takes. But I'm going to tell you honestly right now, everything that you see on this show is 100% me. Okay. Um, I tried to take information from all, uh, all sources, uh, take what I watch uh, on Sunday night and Sunday afternoon and kind of take my spin on it. And then I like to go back and I'll watch the, the ballers. I'll watch fantasy pros and I'll see how close I come to the experts, the guys who are professionals in this, who are doing this and getting paid for it. So I'm not. I don't have any kind of restrictions and there's no really uh, agenda here. So I'm doing this out of love of the game and try to help you guys as much as I can. Uh, with that said, I'm going to hit, I'm going to go on some of my hits and misses from last week. Uh, tomorrow you will get my starts and sets of the week. Uh, we've, like I said, we've got two games. We've got the, uh, we got the Daxless Cowboys uh, coming up against the Cardinals in the, in the Monday night, the traditional Monday night matchup. And then we have a special edition uh, Monday night football on actually Monday afternoon uh, for a lot of you. So it's going to be the Chiefs and the and the uh, Bills going on tonight. So my take on Stefan Diggs is going to have to wait. Uh, my take on Josh Allen, on Mahomes, Kelsey, on all those games is going to have to wait. I do have some... Uh, some start sits that I that I did, and some of them I hit on, some of them I didn't. We're going to go over that here in just a second, and then we're going to have overreaction Monday. Uh, everybody knows what this is. You have games that happen during Sunday that make you go, oh, my God, this player is amazing, or that guy sucks, when really it's – maybe it's facing really bad defense – Maybe you lost one of his key. Maybe it was quarterback who lost his key player. Maybe you got knocked out early and you didn't see it and you're just finding out later. So with that said, we're going to roll through some uh, some hits and misses that I had during the week on quarterbacks. Um, right as it stands right now on the six quarterbacks that I said you sit or three quarterbacks I said you sit and three quarterbacks I said you start. Um, I actually hit three and three. So I had three hits. I had three misses. Um, if you missed out on, on Deshaun Watson, I'm sorry. That's all I can say. Uh, no, quarterback number one on the week, 40 points. He just went bananas. And I'm going to call this the Bill O'Brien effect. Um, <laughs> Bill O'Brien, look, in the last two weeks without Bill O'Brien, Dak, or, uh, Dak, uh, Deshaun Watson has gone 359 and three touchdowns and 335 and four touchdowns for a total of 70 plus points on those two weeks combined. Look, is this what we're going to see now for Deshaun Watson? Is Deshaun Watson being released? Is he being allowed to cook like they're allowing Russell Wilson to cook up in Seattle? I think so. I think this is something that you can bank on. So if you have Deshaun Watson, roll him out every week, okay, regardless of matchup. Uh, he has the ability. He's now being allowed to get out there and do his thing. So with that said, I blew it. Sorry, guys. Uh, another miss for mine was big, and this was a personal miss. Uh, Big Ben, I told you to start. Uh, ben was playing the Browns, and I figured he'd have a better day. It was actually their defense that actually had a really great day, and it was uh, basically Cleveland. It just was Cleveland. 
uh, 12.98 points on the day. Not real good. Uh, also, I told you to sit Joe Burrow, and I hit on that 6.72 points. Told you to sit Baker Mayfield. I hit on that 7.26. And I told you to start Kirk Cousins. Captain Kirk came in as it stands right now. As the, I believe the quarterback eight. Let's go ahead and take a look real quick. Uh, you guys know whenever I go to the shared screen, that it's always time to thank our sponsors of the show. Would like to thank. Keller's Bakery in Lafayette off the Youngsville Highway, 627 Lafayette Street. Find them on Facebook. When you go by, tell them that the Dean sent you, and with your order, you get two free cookies, all right? Tell me what you get and let me know. So he's sitting actually as a QB7. I was watching the game last night, and Jimmy G was creeping up slowly behind him, missed him by just basically one pass. Um He's got 29.72 points for Cousins. Jimmy G checks in uh, first game back from being benched against Miami last week. Uh, he's back in the driver's seat, goes for 268 and three touchdowns. Jimmy G does for 29.52. But I did hit on Kirk, so almost 30 points for Kirk. Really good showing. And let's see. Uh, overreaction to quarterbacks, or actually, I'll tell you what, let's go and we'll do uh, stop this real quick. Let's uh, let's go with some, some more hits and misses real quick for you guys. So, out of my running backs, sorry, <laughs> I got so far, I've got. One hit, I think, yeah, we're waiting on CEH to come through. If CEH is a miss this week, then I will go two and four on my running back hit and uh, start sets. The one that I hit on was Miles Gaskin. I told you to start him. He got 16.6 points. Uh, I told you to start Antonio Gibson. J.D. McKissick just came in and wrecked the whole show. Uh, Gibson winds up with 9.5. Everybody, and I mean everybody, missed out on Alexander Madison. Uh, Madison actually got four point not forty four. Everybody thought that he could get forty, but four points is all he got. So moving forward with Alexander Madison, what do you do? You keep him. Okay. So Madison, uh, Madison going into this week, he was going up against Atlanta. Atlanta was without Dan Quinn, finally, and actually was able to hold a lead, okay? Um, so Jefferson just went off in this game. Uh, you know, if you had Justin Jefferson, you were starting him. Uh, this is where Kirk Cousins just balled out uh, without Dalvin Cook, without a run game. They weren't leaning on it. So kind of went away from Alexander Madison. That kind of hurt a lot of people. Uh, especially the Madison or the uh, Cook owners who were stashing Madison or people who were stashing Madison waiting for Dalvin Cook to get hurt. So uh, that said, sorry, guys, just keep hold of Madison because at some point in time, Cook probably will get hurt again. He'll probably wind up pulling a hamstring or twist his knee or something. So just stash him on your bench if you're able to. Uh, Joe Mixon was another one I told you to sit, along with Miles Sanders. Mixon winds up with 14.9 points, and Miles Sanders winds up with 13.2. Look, nobody knew that Philly was going to do what they did. I mean, you have Carson Wentz going for 213, two touchdowns, one rushing touchdown against the Ravens. Now, if this is what Philly is turning the corner – to do with Doug Peterson in charge. And it looks like they're starting to get the receivers back. Carson Wentz could be legit. Okay, so we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, week seven, he gets the Giants, and the Giants don't look anything special. Okay, I know they beat my boys, 
by one point because Riverboat Ron wants to be Riverboat Ron instead of going for the tie, he goes for the win. Short term, I'm unhappy. Long term, we'll wait and see. Okay. Uh, as far as wide receivers go, as I said, my uh, my take on Cooper, on Stefan Diggs, uh, Robert Woods just wound up last night. Those are all going to have to wait. Uh, we can actually take a look real quick and see how Woods ended 